people have the right to freely associate in private and to join together as private membership groups. You might not want to join a cannabis club, but you certainly cannot stop people from doing that. On January 1st, 2014, recreational marijuana became legal in Colorado. Woo! There's just one small problem. People can buy it, they can use it, but in a lot of cases they don't have anywhere where they can use it legally. That's right. Weed is legal in Colorado, but it's illegal to use it in any public location. It's become a huge issue for a state that's attracting record numbers of tourists who are curious to try cannabis, but have no safe legal place to do so. In fact, public consumption citations rose 471% in the first year of legalization, and fines average $100 per ticket. Local business owner Ryan Connolly says he noticed the problem when out-of-towners began to come to his store looking for help. Once customers started buying legal weed, they would come to our store and shop for clothes and always ask us the question, since we're locals, where can I smoke this? And this question started to happen more and more um, where we actually just couldn't really ignore it anymore. So Ryan, who runs the Grassroots Clothing Store and is the founder of the 710 Cannabis Cup, devised a solution using space in his own store. We created it into a private member's break room that was a private member base, 21 or over, word of mouth, membership club where you could consume cannabis. And it was a BYOB establishment, so you would go to the dispensary and then now have your safe place to smoke. Ryan created a private club with the help of Jeff Gard, a Boulder attorney who had successfully established private marijuana clubs in several other Colorado counties. I did my homework on it and I found out that there is an exception to the Colorado Indoor Air Act for private member clubs. So the VFW, the Odd Fellows, the Elks Club, things of that nature. So every person that wants to consume marijuana at the break room has to join the membership, has to be approved by uh, the people who are already members, and then again, their dues go solely to pay for the overheads. Under this private membership model, Ryan's break room tallied 4,000 members in just over a year. Even stars like Cheech Marin stopped by when visiting Denver to use the facility. The private pot club operated without incident until one weekend in April. The government resistance to 420 was pretty strong already, but strangely enough became a much more concerted, organized effort by the city of Denver this year after uh, marijuana had been legalized. And among these things also, uh, a decision was made by uh, the Denver Police Department as well as the city attorney's office to crack down on private membership clubs. And among those clubs that were targeted was my client's club. And so what happens is officers sort of doing their homework about this, uh, found out about the club, and then posing as prospective members, they basically lied their way uh, into the club. On 419, I wanna say around like five or six o'clock, I saw about 15 or 20 uh, plainclothes officers come in. And at first they were, you know, a little aggressive, but weren't too bad, but they were like, you know why we're here. When they got back there, they kind of, I, I think were a little surprised to find that this is a private membership club, that they had to sign up as members to become part of it, that there wasn't anything going on from the perspective of the break room that uh, was arguably illegal. Though Denver police did not charge any of the members with a crime, they cited Ryan for operating a marijuana business without a license and for violating the Clean Indoor Air Act. You know, it's stressful because we tried to do everything in our power to separate the two, two different staffs, two different um, point of sale systems. Uh, which is interesting, the police counted our money, went through our point of sale system, and didn't take any of it. I believe truly that they did not think we were actually selling anything. But Ryan's ordeal didn't end there. After citing him for licensing violations, the city went one step further and threatened Ryan's landlord with a public nuisance abatement if they didn't evict him from the premises. You know, the eviction is what hurts the most. We have over 20 staff that I want to make sure we keep jobs for all of them. Ryan appeared in court in July and paid his fines. When we visited, he was in the middle of packing up his business and looking for a new location to move his store. Though Ryan lost his space, he's hopeful that this experience will bring about a change in the current law. I think it's, you know, the people's choice now to step up and look at these instances where they're still wasting our taxpayers' money and going after something you would 
think would be you know, a respectable thing to do, which is offer someone from out of state a safe place to smoke. People who have similar interests and similar uh, hobbies or whatever uh, have the right to freely associate in private and to join together as private membership groups. You might not want to join a cannabis club, but you certainly cannot stop people from doing that. As Ryan moves forward, a debate is now unfolding between marijuana policy advocates and city leaders on how to address the public consumption issue. Denver's Office of Marijuana Policy says Amendment 64 clearly states that marijuana is only to be used for private and personal use, and that the initiative was not designed to accommodate tourists. But that hasn't stopped visitors or local residents from consuming pot in public, which is why Mason Tivert of the Marijuana Policy Project is hoping a compromise can be reached. You know, we don't want a separate but equal system here. We want adults who enjoy using marijuana to be able to associate with adults who enjoy using alcohol, and as long as it's only people 21 and older, there really shouldn't be a problem with that. The majority of people are not scoff laws. We understand that their rules are necessary for ordered society, so just tell us where to go. Tell us where, where we can do this, and we will go do that. And it makes perfect sense that if you want to quit writing public consumption tickets, if you want to have a positive image, if you will, and from the perspective of the government, uh, you know, that marijuana is uh, not the only thing that's going on in Colorado right now, then creating a private environment for that is makes perfect sense.